my dear students, and welcome to this week overview. During this week, we're going to talk about the logistic growth and limiting factors. So, logistic growth refers to a type of population growth where the population initially grows rapidly but eventually levels off due to environmental constraints. It's like a roller coaster ride that sta starts off fast but then slows down as it reaches the top. Limiting factors are the factors that restrict or limit the growth of a population. They can be biotic, which means living, or abiotic, which means non-living factors. Biotic factors include availability of food, predation, competition for resources, and disease. Abiotic factors include temperature, water availability, sunlight, and soil nutrients. These factors act as roadblocks that prevent the population from growing indefinitely. When a population reaches its carrying capacity, which is the maximum number of individuals an environment can sustain, the limiting factors become more pronounced as resources become sacred and competition increases. The population growth rate slows down until it reaches a stable equilibrium. This is important because understanding logistic growth and limiting factors is crucial in studying the population dynamics and the delicate balance between organisms and their environment. Density dependent factors are those that are influenced by the population density, meaning they become more significant as population size increases. These factors include competition for resource, predation, disease, and plagiarism. As the population density raises, the impact of these factors intensifies, which can lead to a decrease in population size. On the other hand, density independent factors are not influenced by population density. They affect the population regardless of its size. Examples of density independent factors include natural disasters like hurricanes or floods, temperature extremes, and habitat destruction. These factors can have a significant impact on population size, regardless of how densely populated an area is. Understanding the interplay between density dependent and density independent factors help us comprehend and understand the complex dynamics of population and how they respond to various environmental conditions. Then we're going to move to talk about the biotic potential. The biotic potential refers to the maximum reproductive capacity of a population under ideal conditions. It's like the full potential of a party where everyone is dancing and having a great time. Several factors contribute to an organism's biotic potential. These factors include the age at which individuals can reproduce, the number of offsprings produced per reproductive event, the frequency of reproductive events, and the survival rate of the offsprings to reproduce age. Basically, it's all about how efficiently and successfully an organism can reproduce. Different species have different biotic potentials. For example, some species may have a high biotic potential, producing many offsprings in a short amount of time, while others may have lower biotic potential, producing fewer offsprings over a long period of time. It's important to note that, uh, that biotic potential is often limited by various factors, such as availability of resources, competition, predation, and disease. These factors can prevent population from reaching its full reproductive capacity. It's like having a party with limited space to run. Understanding biotic potential helps us study the population dynamic and how different species are able to sustain and grow their population.